before Vinny and before Ingve, probably the closest modern progenitor of these three note per string type shreddy patterns was really sort of the godfather of picking technique in the late 70s and early 80s, and it's this guy. Amazing, right? Al Di Miola. This concert series that he did with John McLaughlin and Paco de Lucia, these three guys would travel like a G3 before G3 or a three tenors before three tenors. These were really the originators, originators of this format for guitar performance, and the performances were blazing. These are some of the best live guitar playing, especially for picking technique, that you'll ever see. This particular clip comes from a concert called Guitar Summer Night. It's not clear that it's even available anymore, so you may be able to find it online through various means. And it's totally worth doing because the playing is totally turned up to 11 here. All three guys are at the peak of their powers, and of course Paco is no longer with us, which makes it even more poignant to watch. But Al here is just totally on fire and blazing. <laughs> The Pepsi Lick isn't ours either. It's Al's. Al's playing the Pepsi Lick. He's playing descending sixes. And how do we know it's not swiped? Well, check out that hand. Check out the two-way rotation in the hand. It's clear as day. Even from halfway out in the audience here, we don't even need to zoom in, but I'm going to do it a little bit. There it is. Notes four and five on the lower string, you see that the rotation happens. The lighting here actually helps us, that hard line of shadow that goes across his knuckle. When you see it turn down like this, then you know he's going to back to the top string. He's doing down, up, down. He's going back to the low string. It's very clear. Amazing, right? If you do some YouTube searching for live clips of Al's playing, whenever you see him launch into this slick, there are some really great clips out there where you can get an even closer up angle on this, and you can see very definitively that this is the same exact mechanic that Michelangelo Badio uses, the same one that Vinnie Moore uses, the same one that I did in the first sixes when I was kind of stumbling through this earlier. The, the, the mechanics of descending sixes starting on a downstroke are nearly universal. There really is no other way to do this. Another really cool example of two-way pick slanting and Al's playing was this gem from the same concert. Check this out. The reason this is interesting is because it's not really a traditional left-hand pattern that you'd find a lot of people playing. It's a mixed number of notes pattern, a hybrid pattern. Some strings have two notes, others have three. The top string has three, and he's just looping through it the way we've been doing with our scalar figures, except here he's got a couple strings that have two notes per string. Like What's happening here is really pretty cool. Even though these are two note per string fingerings, the turnaround point on the bottom, of course, you're going to repeat a note, so you're going to end up with three notes. That means that the bottom string is going to have two notes, and you're going to do this. And the middle string is going to be two, like this. Now the top string is this three note per string fingering. So that's going to be a sort of a circular scale or thing like what we've been doing. Now what's cool about this is on the way up, you're going to do it with upward pick slanting, like this. And when you get to the top, in the middle of this three note per string thing, almost like the odd numbered patterns we were working on earlier, if you rotate to downward pick slanting, you can then come back down. So on the way down, it's a downward pick slanting lick. On the way up, it's, a two, it's a, an upward, upward pick slanting lick. Very cool, right? Now, 
Now, so this type of mechanic is really useful for repeating or looping any kind of two or three note per string fingering, but especially two note per string fingerings. If you were to do this in, let's say, a box position pentatonic type of contact, you, most people don't play the pentatonic scale as though it were an actual diatonic scale where we tend to think more sequent sequentially or linearly. We'll just play all the notes in a row. Everybody just blues things and pull off. But you don't have to. You can treat a two note per string fingering just like a three note per string fingering and play it linearly if you make it a two way pick slanting pattern. So in a box position situation, I could do it downward pick slanting on the way down, just the way that Al's doing it here, and upward pick slanting on the way up, like this. So what's happening here, again, the same as in Al's Lick, I'm doing downward pick slanting on the way down, which means um, if I'm starting in C blues, which is this, the pinky is the downstroke and the index is the upstroke in the classic box position fingerings where you reuse the same two fingers. So it's gonna be down up, down up, and then down up down on the lowest string and because it has three notes, that's when I switch to upward pick slant. Then I go up and on the way up, the whole picking structure is reversed. It's up down on each string. And of course, at the top, I have three notes again, and that allows me to switch back to downward pick slanting. sequence that, all kinds of cool things. But what's amazing is the incredible freedom that you have with two-way pixel linking to navigate patterns you would have previously considered impossible. Now, if you look again at what Al's doing here, check this out. You can see that almost every note that he plays here has a little bit of two-way pick slanting swing to it. So it's almost... It's almost a little bit hyper-exaggerated. It's not necessary to do that. We can economize by using one-way pick slanting in each direction. So that the way up, in this case, is upward pick slanting. The way down is downward pick slanting. But of course, we could flip that and reverse it to paraphrase a rap lyric, if we flip the picking structure, then I would use the opposite pick slant in each direction. I could have downward pick slanting ascending and upward pick slanting descending and everything reverses in typical anti-gravity head spinning fashion. But anyway, fantastic stuff. And again, yet amazing that these guys don't realize they're doing this stuff, don't think to teach it. And it's yet totally indispensable in playing these sorts of head spinning patterns.